Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope that you're all doing well. You know guys, I haven't made a video for about a couple of weeks or a week or so. And you know guys, just, just a few things that I want to share in this video today. That, um, that the Lord has been speaking to me and putting on my heart to share. You know guys, the first thing is, is that God's grace is new every morning hallelujah you know guys when john the baptist said when jesus walked past john the baptist sorry and john the baptist said behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world hallelujah you know guys someone explained it to me like this you know that many christians believe that when jesus died and you, on the cross, he died for, for your sins. And if you believe in that, at some point in your life, then all your past sins were forgiven. You know, guys, and that's a very um, common, you know, like way of looking at it. You know, guys, as a Catholic growing up, that's the kind of way that you see it. You know, after you become a Catholic or a Christian, you know, if you sin, you have to go to confession, go and confess your sins and get those sins forgiven. But through studying the Bible and, and listening to the Apostle Paul, you know, he goes into depth of how, you know, Jesus died for your past, your present and your future sin. You know, guys, it's not something that, um, you know, now that you're a Christian, every time that you may stumble into a sin, that Jesus is going to come down to earth and die again for your sin. You know, guys, you know, Jesus died once for sin. You know, guys, once you believed in Jesus, you know, repented, was baptized in water, you know, your sin was forgiven. You know, guys, hallelujah. And it's a, this is a bit radical for most Christians you know, because most Christians grew up in a church or they listened to maybe legalistic, you know, um, preachers or teachers who say that, you know, if you make one mistake and you forget to repent for that one mistake and you die, you'll go straight to hell. But this is not so, you know, guys, once you, you know, um, become a born again believer, you're forgiven. You know, guys, period. You know, you're forgiven of your sin from, you know, the, the from the last sin that you did all the way into the, to, to the sin that you'll do when you're, you know, um, about to take your last breath, you know, guys. And a lot of people, they don't like this idea that what the New Testament teaches because they believe that it's a license to sin that, you know, yeah, sure, go and, you know, once saved, always saved, you know, guys. That's definitely not true, you know, guys. You can, you know, guys, salvation is a free gift, you know, guys. And obviously, you know, when you receive a gift, you can reject that gift. So, I'm, you know, guys, I don't believe once saved, always saved. But I do believe that once you've, you know, received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know, he's not going to reject you because you are adopted into the Elohim family. You are now, you know, a born again Christian, you know, guys. And when you have this revelation that God's grace is new every morning, when you have a revelation that Jesus didn't just die for your past sins, but for your sins that you may, you know, commit, you know, in your walk with God, once you realize this, you know, guys, it takes away the fear of losing your salvation it takes away you know almost like a performance based salvation like somehow you have to be good enough you have to be holy enough in order to enter god's kingdom when jesus lowered the bar so low because he knew that us born again christians that us human beings you know guys make plenty of mistakes you know um that we are justified by faith. You know, John 3.16 states that, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, 
that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, guys, it's faith in the Son of God. It's faith in Jesus that justifies us. You know, we are saved by grace through faith, least any man should boast. You know, guys, it's so simple. You need a good theologian to mess it up for you. As Jesse Duplantis says, <laughs> you know, guys, and, um, you know, guys, I wasn't planning on speaking about that, but this one truth of the, the gospel, the good news, you know, guys, because the gospel means good news, you know, guys, hallelujah. It wouldn't be good news if you somehow had to earn your way into God's kingdom or you somehow had to, you know, um, remember every single mistake that you ever make and, and repent daily, you know, guys, of, of, you know, guys, because we are making mistakes continually, whether it be in thought, in what we say, in what we do, etc. But, you know, guys, justification is so important to learn as a Christian. You know, guys, hallelujah, justification will set many people free on YouTube. There is a lot of legalistic preaching on YouTube, you know, guys, and I used to be one of those preachers on YouTube who used to teach this, you know, legalistic lie that you had to perform, you have to be good enough, you know, you have to um, somehow never sin, you have to somehow, you know, um, be praying for like 10 hours a day and reading your Bible every day and, you know, guys, you know, that what that reminds me of is the law of Moses, you know, God gave the Hebrews the law, not so that they could keep it, but so that they could try to keep it and fail and, and see that, that they needed a savior, that they couldn't keep it. Because the law states that if you keep all the rules, regulations and commandments, but you miss one, then you've missed them all. And you know, guys, that's what sin, the word sin means. It means that you miss the mark, you know, guys, and it's written that for all have sinned, for all have fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned, you know, guys, because we inherited the sin nature from Adam and Eve. But Jesus was the new Adam, you know, guys. And when we put our faith in him, we become born again. We become offspring of Jesus Christ. And that sin nature gets destroyed, but, you know, that sin nature gets destroyed, but we are still living here on the face of planet Earth. We get a brand new spirit, but not a brand new soul. Our nature is changed. We no longer want to sin. You know, we no longer have our old spirit. We are no longer, you know, children of the original Adam, but we're children of God now. But... We are still here on the face of planet Earth. And that's, and that's called sanctification. After you receive justification, then you are walking in sanctification. Your walk, your relationship with God. You know, guys, hallelujah. And that's, you know, renewing our mind. You know, guys, you know, being transformed by the word of God. Because we still have our old mind. Hallelujah. But you know, guys, what I want to point out is, is that in your sanctification pro process, your walk with God, you're going to make mistakes. You know, guys, you're going to make mistakes. You know, guys, and some of you may say, you know, um, Jesus said, "Be perfect as your as your heaven as your heavenly Father is perfect." But you know, guys, we forget that when Jesus was giving, you know, the teaching on the mount. I think it was the Mount of Olives, I believe it was. And he, and he gave that famous Beatitudes. You know, he was talking to people, to Jewish people who were under the law of Moses. Remember, Jesus had not died on the cross and risen again. There was no born again believers then. You know, guys, that's why, you know, guys, you have to put everything into context because the law of Moses was commanding people, the Hebrews to be perfect, to keep every rule, regulation, and law. That's why Jesus was telling them, you know, if you look at a woman with lust, you commit 
adultery with her in your heart or if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. You know, guys, he was talking to people under the law. You know, guys, hallelujah. Because Jesus had not died yet and was not risen again. You know, can you be perfect as God is perfect? No, you can't. <laughs> you know, guys, the only person who could have been perfect was Jesus Christ. That's why he died on the cross and took our place. We can strive to be perfect. You know, guys, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Hallelujah. You know, guys, it, you know, guys, there's lots of scriptures saying that we can overcome sin. But what I want to point out is there is now no shame no guilt, no condemnation for those who are in Christ. You know, guys, hallelujah. You know, guys, hallelujah. We are only entering the gates of heaven by the blood of the Lamb. In the same way that the Hebrews in Egypt, they put the blood of a lamb on their doorposts so, the angel, so that angel that came to kill all the firstborn you know, when they put that blood on the doorpost, the angel would pass by them. The judgment would be passed by them. In the same way, the only reason why your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life is because Jesus died on the cross and you believed it. And you're justified by that faith. Your sins have been washed away. It's not because, you know, you have a ministry and you read your Bible every day and you give a tithe and you give alms and tithes and offerings and, you know, you're, you're, you're bringing people to the Lord and you're such a good person. No, you know, guys, the Bible says that your good deeds are filthy rags. You know, guys, compared to God's goodness, anything you, if you think you're a good person, maybe compared to your neighbor, you might be, but compared to God, it's filthy rags. You know, guys, hallelujah. Obviously, in John 15, if we abide in Christ, then we will bear good fruit. But that only comes through your relationship with God. That comes through staying with Jesus, you know, abiding in Christ. And then you bear fruit. You know, guys, hallelujah. Getting off topic. But, you know, guys, I want to break that lie, that mentality that you have to earn your way into God's kingdom. Because... This theology on YouTube and in some churches is rampant. So many people are preaching perfectionism. So many people are preaching that you believe in what Jesus did for your sins and you have to live as holy as you possibly can, otherwise you're not going to make it into heaven. If that was the case, no one would be going into the kingdom of heaven. You know, guys, Paul says we are justified by faith. Some of you may say, you know, um, faith without works is dead. You know, guys, some of you may be saying, Ben, what about that? You know, guys, and faith is the substance of things not yet seen. You know, guys, faith is, is something that you put your trust in. You know, guys, if you have faith that your car is going to get you to work, then you'll go in there and you will, you know, turn the key on, put your seatbelt on and, and drive to work. But how do you put your faith in a promise in the word of God? You know, guys, how do you put your faith in Jesus Christ? It's by believing, it's by trusting, you know, guys, and you're justified by your trust, by your faith, by believing, hallelujah. You know, guys, and it's obvious of those who believe and those who don't because, you know, um, they're going to be born again. They're going to be loving Jesus. You know, guys, not perfect. You know, guys, and, and, and <laughs> all of us are far from perfect. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus died on the cross. Hallelujah. That's why it says that the righteous man may fall seven times and get back up. That's why Paul said, you know, in my weakness, God's power is perfected. Hallelujah. You know, guys, all the way from Adam and Eve, all the way until the book of John, you know, the book of Revelations. You know, guys, God's people made mistakes. You know, 
Hallelujah. There's a saying, there by the grace of God go I. You know, guys, hallelujah. You know, guys, it's by the grace of God, God's grace, unmerited favor, that we are saved. Hallelujah. And once you understand this, then you can have a, a real relationship with God. Not a relationship of, oh, if I don't work hard enough for God or if I'm not good enough, you know, then God will reject me. That's a relationship driven by fear, not by faith. You know, guys, are you driven by fear or by faith? You know, guys, hallelujah. Be driven by faith, not fear. You know, guys, it's written that perfect love casts out all fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. You know, guys, the fear of man is a snare. You know, guys, anything to do with fear is not good. Hallelujah. You know, guys, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You know, guys, possibly, you know, fearing God, the fear of God is the beginning of, beginning of understanding. It's true, we must fear God, but we must believe His Word where it says we are saved by grace through faith, least any man should boast, you know, guys, hallelujah. And I can tell you from first hand experience of, you know, um, being a born again Christian, but being under legalism, being under an almost work based salvation compared to, you know, walking with God under grace and understanding that you know, that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, understanding that I've been sealed until the day of Jesus coming, that, you know, that you can't add anything to God's grace. You know, from from living in, in, in that, compared to living in a fear-driven, work-based work salvation, is two completely different things. You know, guys, God's grace you know, um, was there while I was believing this, this doctrine. But since knowing the truth, it has made me free from trying to work my way into God's kingdom, rather than just like Jesus said, believing like a little child. You know, it says, unless we are like a little child, you know, and just, you know, simply believing, you know, we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You know, guys, in the same way, once you realize that what Jesus did on the cross, you know, what he did is the only reason why any human being is going to go to heaven. You know, guys, hallelujah. It's completely paid for in full. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. Hallelujah. There is therefore now no shame. No guilt, no condemnation for those who are in Christ. You know, guys, hallelujah. And some of you may be saying, well, Ben, you know, now you're just giving us a, a license to sin. Well, let me put this out there. Who you yield yourself to, they become your master. You know, guys, John 10:10. 10, 10, Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. But Satan comes to steal kill and destroy. It says Satan is like a roaring lion seeking in whom he can devour. So in other words, if you submit yourself to God, resist the devil and he will flee, then you are going to walk in that victory. You're going to walk, you know, without being entangled. You're going to walk without opening a door. You're going to walk without the devil coming in and stealing and killing and destroying in your life. You know, guys, hallelujah. So, you know, you can be rewarded by God, you know, by staying in his spirit, staying in his presence. You know, guys, hallelujah. Staying in his presence, tan that tangible presence. You know, guys, obviously your spirit and God's spirit are one. So you are in his spirit because you're connected with God. You know, the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwells within you. But if you choose to sin, you know, guys then you're opening a door to a demon. And that demon is going to come into your life and do some, some evil, steal, kill, and destroy in some part of your life. You know, guys, and you can close that door by saying, God, you know, 
I'm turning away from this. Forgive me for that. You know, guys, even though you're already forgiven, but you just say, God, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm turning away from that. And God will close that door from that demon. You know, guys, so I hope that you understand what I'm saying when I'm saying that, you know, Jesus died for all of you, all the sin of the world. God took out all his anger on Jesus Christ. And if you believe in him, there is therefore now no condemnation. You know, guys, for those who are in Christ, hallelujah. So, you know, guys, my question to you is, you know, are you still trying to somehow do enough good works or somehow do enough, you know, good deeds to get into heaven? Good people don't go to heaven. Only saved people do. People who believe that Jesus died for their sins. There's a lot of good people in hell. Because people who reject Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they're the ones who end up in hell. You know, guys. Hallelujah. And there's a lot of bad people in heaven because they realized that they needed a Savior and they asked God for forgiveness and they received it by faith and they, boom, they're justified by faith. Their name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. You know, guys, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I hope that this video has touched someone. Jesus loves you. And remember, God's grace is new every morning. Hallelujah. You know, guys, God loves you. Jesus loves you. You know, guys. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope that you have a blessed week. You know, guys, and I hope that you um, understand that, that the gospel is good news. It means that you're forgiven now. It means that, you know, um, that you've been adopted into his family, that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You can't, <laughs> grace is what God does. The only thing you can do is believe, you know, guys, and, and, and work out your relationship with God. Hallelujah. You know, guys, walk in that sanctification. The more you yield yourself to God, the more, you know, um, you're going to get sanctified the more fruit you're going to bear in your life. You know, guys, hallelujah. So Jesus loves you and thanks for watching, guys. Bye.